morning, uh, everyone. Uh, well, today I'd like to talk about the uh, recent advances in pre-trust concrete in Korea uh, with my colleague, uh, Dr. Park at uh, KICD, uh, Dr. Shim at Daol ENC, and Professor Zhang uh, in Korea National University of Transportation. Well, uh, in the last spring convention in Quebec, uh, I introduced the first Korean experience in tension, uh, tendon failure by corrosion and immediate reactions. And once again, I'd like to uh, introduce briefly at, uh, that story. Uh, but uh, in uh, major topic is uh, these two uh, topics, regrouting method and tendon uh, force monitoring. Uh, first of all, uh, let's take a look at a brief history of a pre concrete bridge. Uh, as you know well, the first pre concrete bridge is Rugency Bridge in France, uh, designed and constructed by Freshner uh, during 1941 and 1946. And the Walnut Lane Memorial Bridge in Philadelphia is the first PSCC bridge in the United States, uh, constructed in 1949 and 1951. But unfortunately, we can see this uh, bridge only in this picture because this bridge was demolished and the new uh, Walnut Lane Bridge was constructed. It's the reason why uh, I think this uh, bridge is called Memorial. Yeah. And uh, in Korea, the first PSC bridge uh, was Kuun Bridge, constructed in 1962, connecting Seoul to Chuncheon City. And the first precast segmental PSC bridge with uh, external and or internal tendon uh, the Seoul Inner Circle Highway Bridge, constructed between 1991 and then 1997. During uh, construction of a Seoul Inner Circle Highway Bridges, uh, Songsu Bridges across the Han River in Seoul collapsed in 1994. Well, it was a, a disaster for Korean bridge engineer as well as Korean people. But uh, I think one thing not too bad was that uh, this bridge is a bridge not concrete bridge. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, let's go back to the worldwide uh, history. Well, in 1967, the first case of bridge collapse by tendon corrosion was reported in the United Kingdom. And in the United States, the external tendon corrosion of a nine channel bridge was reported in 1999. And uh, there are so many similar cases were reported in uh, France, Germany, Belgium, and Japan. So the Korean uh, precious concrete expert thought that the tendon corrosion would rise in Korean bridges sooner or later. Uh, they suggested that the maintenance organization should investigate uh, bridges in order to uh, detect abnormal symptoms such as cracks. In the meantime, uh, eventually it happened. The first tendon uh, corrosion and fracture in Korea was reported in 2016, uh, February 17th on Wednesday. Well, it happened in Bridge J, uh, which is the east part of the Seoul Inner Circle Highway. Well, it, the inspector who found uh, this fracture uh, was just so surprised and very uh, shocked. So he went to a hospital to make his uh, heart come down uh, because of the memory of the Songsu Bridge collapse. Well, the Seoul Inner Circle Highway uh, runs along the north of Han River and goes around. And uh, this uh, bridge is composed of four very long viaducts uh, such as bridge J, bridge D, uh, S, and H. The, the total bridge length is over 21 kilometers, which is over 13 miles. 
Well, the fracture, fracture location is there at the section above the interior support, uh, pier 41. And the section has eight internal tendons and 12 external tendons. And one of the external tendon fractures 19 years after construction. So, uh, we performed research project on tendon corrosion problem and precious concrete bridge between uh, 2016 and 2017. Uh, in order to investigate the cause of tendon corrosion and current state and to propose maintenance method. So by the uh, investigation of external tendon in bridge J, uh, we detected very poor uh, quality of grout and large void at the top of the duct near diaphragm. And I think uh, at the top uh, picture, you can see the top level of grout. So the bleeding water at the top of the grout might accelerate uh, tendon, uh, tendon corrosion. And five more tendons were found failed or subjected to significant sectional loss. But the high chloride concentration in grout was measured and Contribute to the air band directly connected uh, to the top of the bridge deck. In bridge S, uh, two uh, external tendon failure was detected. In void, uh, there was significant corrosion uh, and the failure of external tendon located in low position. However, the chloride concentration was low. Uh, and the quality of grout was uh, better than uh, bridge J. So anyway, uh, the corroded tendon were replaced and additional spare tendon were installed. And we used unbonded tendon with grease in a hard uh, polyethylene tube without uh, cement grout. And now, uh, let me talk about the two research projects. Uh, the first one is regrouting method by field application and laboratory test on corrosion behavior. And second one is application of a smart strand. Well, we uh, applied the three different regrout methods to existing tendons. The method one is a vacuum assisted pressure grouting with high quality grout. The method two is polymer impregnation after pressure uh, grouting. And method three is pressure grouting with ultrasonic impregnation. And then we investigated uh, regrout qualities and started to conduct monitoring and comparing with the untreated tendon with uh, <coughs> void grout. And method one, uh, vacuum assisted uh, pressure grouting was conducted with the uh, cement grout in compliance with ISO 14824. Well, the first step is to conduct the suction uh, by vacuum pump, as you can see in the right-hand side figure, and then uh, insert grout with the pressure. Uh, we applied this process for two cases. The first one is remove and or uh, not remove the existing grout. And after 72 hours curing, uh, the, graft, the graft filling condition was investigated after removing duct. And uh, then we found that the duct was satisfactorily filled, whether removing existing grout or not. And also, we performed a mock-up test for grouting in Anchorage. Uh, then we found that the void in Anchorage can be also filled by vacuum-assisted pressure grouting uh, through an air bent hole. Well, the method two is uh, polymer impregnation after pressure grouting method. Uh, first step is to insert grout with pressure and then apply polymer uh, with pressure. And then we observed that the conduct was satisfactorily filled. And condition of the tendon and grout has been monitored by the transparent window, as you can see in the right-hand side picture. 
And then third method is pressure grouting with ultrasonic impregnation. Well, uh, this uh, uh, method was applied to the uh, region where the no uh, region from the saddle to the location of 13 meter away. Well, uh, we observed that the ducts were satisfactorily filled by three different uh, regrout methods. So we think that the uh, three methods uh, were good, but it is just the uh, beginning of observation. So we have a plan for long-term monitoring, and then uh, we are going to uh, periodically investigate regrout condition by transparent monitoring window, and periodically open the duct to investigate the regrout condition and compare with the untreated tendon with void grout. So the uh, result of investigation will be presented later, maybe in the ACI convention uh, or uh, any place. Well, uh, in addition to the field monitoring, uh, laboratory test program has been set up to investigate the corrosion behavior of a processing steel before and after regrouting. You know, the 10 specimens were made, as you can see in this picture. And inside the specimen, there are two uh, different kind of uh, wires. Uh, continuous loaded wire and discontinuous unloaded wire. And the bottom part is filled with deficient grout. And top portion is empty now. And then we have a plan to fill repair grout later. Well, the corrosion sensors were uh, attached uh, inside the specimen. And then we are going to measure two variables. The first one is corrosion potential. Uh, it indicates the state of a corrosion, uh, corroding matter. And second one is microcell corrosion current. Uh, it reflects the corrosion rate. Well, the specimens are being periodically monitored. And after salt solution was added, corrosion potentials became less than the critical value, which means the corrosion started. Uh, in the near future, uh, we will fill the repair grout in the empty part, and then uh, the change will be further studied. Well, now, from now on, let's, uh, let me talk about the smartest trend for tendon force monitoring. Well, before I talk about these uh, topics, I'd like to uh, ask one question. Well, how do you know tendon force distribution along a pre-stress concrete member? Uh, by calculation with uh, loss estimation or uh, by measurement? Maybe uh, if you calculate uh, tendon force variation considering uh, friction loss, Maybe you uh, will use this equation. P sub x is equal to blah, 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 blah. And, and uh, when you uh, apply this equation, which value do you select for uh, friction coefficient? The curvature friction coefficient mu and wobble uh, friction coefficient k. And also, what about the value of concrete shrinkage strain? and creep coefficient for long-term loss estimation. Are you sure those values you select are perfectly correct? Uh, maybe not. Uh, so the many researchers try to measure tendon force distribution, but it is not easy because the reliable and durable measuring method is required. So the researchers uh, of Korean Institute of Civil Engineering and Building Technology developed the smart strand. The core wire of seven wire strand is replaced by CFRP rod. And inside the CFRP rod, FBG sensor uh, is embedded, as you can see in the left side picture and the middle figures. And you can see the stress-strain relationship of a smart strand and the normal uh, conventional uh, strand. You know, uh, as you can see in this figure, 
the CFRP rod fails first. That means the stress drop down. And then uh, six helical wire fail later. And we found that the tensile strength of strength is 17% higher than normal strength, but the elastic modulus is 7.5% uh, lower than the normal strength. But I think it doesn't matter. And then we applied uh, this smart strand to a new priestess concrete bridge. The bridge had a 60 uh, meter span, uh, which is 199 feet. And smart strand with seven uh, data collecting uh, sensor were installed in the top tendon. Well, then you can see the uh, tendon force variation from the jacking stage up to now. Uh, it is three years and three months elapsed. And at the left-hand side, you can see the tendon force at the time of erection of beam, and at the time of casting of deck concrete, and at the time of tensioning of secondary tendons. And then, uh, you can see the tendon force increase in the summer time and decrease in the winter time and increase and decrease again, up and down, up and down. And another application is this. Uh, during the replacement, the corroded tendon in bridge J and S by new tendon, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one smart strand with eight data collecting point were installed to the bridge J to monitor, uh, measure the tendon force variation. Well, the smart strand works quite well up to now, uh, during 400 days. And as you can see in this figure, the black line is the uh, temperature variation uh, from uh, 30 degrees Fahrenheit and 92 degrees Fahrenheit. And the blue line and uh, orange lines are tendon force. Uh, as you can see, the tendon force variations uh, is very similar to the uh, temperature variation. And we found that the tendon force increased up to 6.9% at the summertime and decreased up to 4.8% in the wintertime. Uh, we are going to uh, measure this tendon force uh, continuously. And then, uh, as a concrete remarks, uh, for the research result on tendon corrosion will be presented later. And as a future study, the ability of detection of tendon failure by smart strand will be prepared. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.